In Creo Parametric, I use direction patterns more than any other pattern type, and there are a bunch of interesting variations in the way that you can apply them. So I'm going to use a very simple part model to show that to you. Here I have my extrude, and there's a hole in here, and we're going to use this hole in a direction pattern. I will select the hole, and then from the mini toolbar, you can choose the pattern command. By default, Creo Parametric is going to go to a dimension pattern, but you can use this drop down list to change the type to direction. And first, for a direction, you could use an edge if you want. So, for example, I'll pick this edge, and that determines the direction. I have a drag handle that I can use to control the spacing. You also have a dimension that you can plug in, and you can also enter in that value on the ribbon. For the number of instances, you can enter that value also on the ribbon, and that's going to be the number of instances, including the original lead feature. So, for example, I'll choose five. And there you can see I've got my original one, two, three, four, five. And you have the different preview dots. If for some reason you didn't want to generate one, click on the preview dot, then hit the check mark, and your pattern will be created. If you want to get that instance back, you will edit definition of the pattern. And I get to that by clicking on the pattern and then choosing the edit definition icon from the mini toolbar. Click on the dot again, and you'll have the instance back. Here, I used an edge reference, but in general, if you have the ability to choose a surface instead, you, cho you should choose that over an edge because that tends to be a more stable reference. Let me right-click on this pattern. Now, I'm going to choose Delete Pattern. Be aware you have Delete and Delete Pattern. If you choose Delete, it'll get rid of the entire pattern including the lead feature, the original feature, but if you choose delete pattern, it will leave your lead feature intact. I just want to do that so I can show you selecting it from scratch. Here I have the hole, let's choose pattern, and this time instead of going to the ribbon to change the type, I'm going to hold down the right mouse button and in the mini toolbar, I could use this icon to change to direction. And for my reference, I'm going to use this flat surface, and your direction is going to be normal to the surface. And it's going to be normal sticking out of the part, so that's why it's going to the left instead of to the right. And I can grab this, and I can drag it off in the other direction, plug in the value that I want, and then change the number of instances. And there we have the preview of the feature that's going to be created. Instead of using that flat planar surface, I could also use a datum axis. Let me cancel out of here, and I've got an axis already in my model that I've hidden, and it's basically going from one vertex in the model to the other vertex. Let's select our hole, then choose pattern, and again, right mouse click and change the type to direction, and then pick the axis and we can specify the distance that we want between the instances and the new instances will be created along that direction and there i have my eight different instances and i will hit the check mark and let's do a, another pattern in a linear direction so i'm going to right click and choose delete pattern and let's turn on the visibility of some of our datum planes. Right now, they're hidden in the model tree. And so then when I choose to pattern the hole, again, from the mini toolbar, hold down the right mouse button, change the type to direction, you could pick a datum plane. And this time, just to choose a little different one, I'm going to use the datum plane called front. And again, it's going sort of like downward in my model I'm looking on here. Just be aware that datum planes actually have two sides, just like a sheet of paper has two sides. And back in Pro Engineer 2001 and earlier, they made a big deal about the two sides of a datum plane, but starting in 
Pro Engineer Wildfire 1.0, they really started de-emphasizing it. If you have really good vision, you might be able to tell that the two sides of a datum plane are actually different colors. It's like a brown color and a gray color. You don't need to worry about that. Hey, just grab the drag handle, drag in the direction that you want, change the dimension, and change the number of instances. And in this way, I'm using a datum plane in order to control the direction that the instances are going. Another thing to be aware of is that when you're using a direction pattern, you don't have to use a linear direction. Let me hide this axis just to clean up my screen visibility, and I'm going to also turn off my datum plane display. Let's select this pattern, and I'm going to edit definition, and from this drop-down list, I can choose whether my direction is going to be a linear direction, a translation, a rotational direction, and I'll show you in a moment how to use a coordinate system. But first, let's do a rotation. And I'm going to select, as my rotation reference, this axis. Right now, the spacing is really close to one another. I'm going to drag them so that they're about 60 degrees apart. And I'm going to change my number of instances to 6. And then when I hit the check mark, what I've done is essentially created an axis pattern, but I'm using the direction pattern in order to do that. Let's edit definition. Uh, actually, before I edit definition, uh, instead of doing a rotational pattern in the direction pattern, I'm going to turn on the display of a coordinate system that I have in my part. And earlier, I used a datum axis to drive a direction. The nice thing about the coordinate system option is that it allows you to define a direction without having to create pre-existing geometry if you have the coordinate system. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let's edit definition of this pattern. And instead of doing a rotation, I'm going to choose a coordinate system as a reference and then pick this particular coordinate system, which actually happens to be at a short or shallow 15 degree angle from being vertical and horizontal. And then you can specify the offsets relative to this coordinate system in the x, y, and z directions. So let's say I want the spacing in the y direction to be a value of 10. And there you can see 10 in the y direction as defined by the coordinate system. But I also want them to be a negative value in the x direction. Let's start off with a value of negative 5. And that way we have the vector being defined by positive 10 in the y direction, negative 5 in the x direction. And be aware you could even use z direction offsets, but that does not make sense in this particular model. And again, I can change my number of instances. And in this way, I'm using coordinate systems and distances in x, y, and z relative to that coordinate system in order to drive the direction of my pattern. All the examples that I've done so far have been with a pattern that's created in one direction. Now we're going to start doing some patterns in two directions, and this is where it really gets interesting. Let's edit definition of this pattern. And again, right now I'm using a coordinate system in the first direction. In the second direction, let's use translation. For example, I will use, let's click in the collector over here. By the way, you could click in the collector or you could hold down the right mouse button and activate your direction to reference collector. So my direction to reference collector, let's pick this flat planar surface. And now in my second direction, I can have a linear distance between the pattern in the first direction and the second direction. And from here, we can choose how many instances that we want. Oops, that's a little too high. Let's maybe back that down to about four. And that way, I'm using a coordinate system in the first direction and then a flat planar surface for a translation in the second direction. Let's edit definition of the pattern. And just for the sake of completeness, I'm going to show you 
doing linear in the first direction. And for the first direction, I'll use this time an edge. And here we have our drag handle. Let's drag the offset and change this to a value of 20 and reduce the number of instances. Let's try value of six and let's just do four. And in this way, I would be creating a four by four pattern. Again, you have the preview dots for changing that. Probably a linear, linear direction pattern is probably one of the most common ones that you will see. Now to make this even more interesting, let's edit definition of our pattern and let's make this a little closer together in the first direct. Oops, actually, let me do this for do, 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 do. let's remove the second direction for what I want to show you. I'm going to change the first direction to use again. You should use a surface ideally and uh, let's enter a negative 15 as an alternative to dragging the drag handle in the other direction. All right, so I have my pattern going linear in the first direction. And then in the second direction, we could do a rotation. And first off, we're doing a rotation. Let's take a look at using this axis. And right now, the angle is really close to one another. Let me increase Actually, I'm going to decrease the number of instances in the first direction, second direction to three and change this angle to 120 degrees. And there you can see how we have first direction and second direction creating this arrangement. Let me change the axis reference to this other axis in my model. And then Let's make them a little, actually let's change the number of instances in the first direction. Just trying to keep all of them on the same surface. Maybe increase the distance between them. And in this way, I've used a direction pattern and I'm getting them almost in a triangular shape in here because again, translating in the first direction, rotating in the second direction. All right. Now let's rotate in the first direction and translate in the second direction. Let me edit definition and let me remove the reference in the second direction. For the first direction, I'm going to change that to a rotation and then pick this particular axis and let's get them 60 degrees apart with a total of six instances. So again, it is going to be like a rotation pattern. And then in the second direction, let's choose to translate. And I can use this flat planar surface for the translation direction. Let's drag them off over here. And let's use a spacing of 40. And number of instances, let's crank that up to five. So again, I have one pattern that is, again, essentially doing a rotation or an axis pattern and then patterning that pattern. In earlier versions of Pro Engineer Wildfire, uh, you used to have to do a pattern of a pattern in order to get something like this. But again, this right now is in one pattern feature. Let me hide the coordinate system. I no longer need it for this. All right. So I have rotated and then done a translation. Let's do a rotation and a rotation. Edit definition once more. Let's change the second direction to be a rotation and then pick this axis as the reference. And let's decrease the number of instances to three. And let's change the spacing to 120 degrees so that they're not overlapping. So this way I have my direction pattern, creating sort of like three separate axis patterns all together. So again, there's a lot that you can do by using combinations of translations and rotations when you're doing this direction pattern. Couple other things to mention with direction patterns. Just like a dimension pattern, you can alter the dimensions that describe the shape of the feature. In this case here, I have a hole. I could choose to change maybe the diameter in the first direction or the diameter in the second direction. You can click 
in the different collectors. Also, you might have noticed earlier when I held down the right mouse button to change my direction references, you also have the ability to activate your Direction 1 Dimensions Collector or your Dimension 2, excuse me, Direction 2 Dimensions Collector to select which dimensions that you want to increment in the first or second direction. Now, after you select a dimension, and I'm not actually going to do it, but I will select a dimension just to show you, you have the ability of, oh, actually it's grayed out in here, uh, for these different dimensions, the ability to increment by a relation is grayed out. But let's remove this dimension from in here. And the very last thing to mention for your direction patterns is that you can change the regeneration option. And this is available for all the different pattern types. And identical is the default. Identical means that all your instances are going to originate from the same surface as the lead feature and they're going to have the same shape as the lead feature. You're not altering any of the dimensions and also none of your instances are going to intersect one another. That is the identical option. With the variable option that you can change the dimensions that are associated with the different features and they can, the instances can originate from other services in the model and can even run out into empty space, but they're not allowed to intersect one another. If they intersect another one another, you will get a regeneration failure. And the general is the free-for-all. You can change the dimensions that describe the shape of the instances in your pattern. They can run off onto other surfaces or into empty space, and the instances are allowed to intersect one another. Now, nominally, general patterns take the longest to regenerate compared to the other two, and identical is going to be the faster. Identical used to be the default, but the code in Creo Parametric has gotten so much faster and they want the models to be more robust and fail less often that general is the default. And I saw an interesting presentation at LiveWorks where it turns out that the difference in regeneration time between identical and general might not be that much. So you might not be taking a big hit by using the general option for your regeneration of your different patterns. So again, that is the direction pattern. I highly recommend that you play around with this so that you can master the functionality for creating your various different instances. And please let me know in the comments section what you think of the direction patterns. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.